Recently, a doctor on Twitter who I follow posted a medical pyramid of evidence. And on the bottom is expert opinion, which they consider to be the lowest form of evidence. And I said, wouldn't it be great if physicists and other scientists use that too and put expert opinion at the bottom? Because it's true. Because as Feynman said, science is the belief in the ignorance of experts. Or as I discussed in a previous video, the majority is always wrong. Because consensus opinion in science, particularly if it's been around, say, 50 years and hasn't been able to solve major problems, is wrong. And there has to be a new paradigm, a new solution that solves those problems. And so experts who base their opinion on consensus aren't to be trusted. But to go on, looking at the medical evidence tree, they put expert opinion on the bottom, and then you have individual case studies. And yes, anecdotal individual case studies can be important if they are documented very well. So you have individual case studies, then you have multiple case studies combined, so you can get statistics, then you can have cohort studies where you can follow large groups over time, and then you have the trials. And trials can have quality. You can have a drug trial with no placebo control, or you can have placebo control. And you can have it randomized, or the doctors can know. And so randomized controlled trials are the best variant. And then there are going to be other factors that you need to control and correct for variables and then you can have a meta-analysis of all the trials to date, which gives you the ultimate scientific picture of the evidence. And so, yeah, we should look at this in the context of physics, or like I said, other science as well. But I like to include first the non-evidential parts. The lowest being no theory at all, say, inertia. If you don't have a theory, that's the lowest form of evidence. And the lowest form of scientist is someone who criticizes someone for coming up with a hypothesis for something like inertia. Certainly, you can criticize a hypothesis if it has weaknesses. That's part of science. But to criticize someone just for trying to come up with a hypothesis for a question that you are too afraid to touch, no, that's unscientific. But then next in the non-evidence section, I put non-expert opinion. Of course, what do you mean by expert? In academia, they might say PhD, but that's an appeal to authority, a logical fallacy. But if you took away all of academia's fallacious appeals to authority, then they wouldn't have any way to know who is an expert. And then another non-evidence is undocumented anecdotes. And above that, theory that's not based on the evidence, which you could call a wild-ass guess. And then when you get into true forms of evidence, perhaps, you have expert opinion. And so how do you tell expert? I, I say trust but verify. If there's a little bit of trust, then maybe you consider they're an expert. Because any metric for what is an expert doesn't, is going to fail. It's going to be fallacious logic. And then above that, you have theories based on the evidence. And note, I put theory below the evidence because the theory isn't the evidence, and there's normally different ways to interpret evidence and propose different hypotheses and theories. So as far as the actual evidence, you could have a single observation, your single case study example that's well documented. You can have a single data point experiment, just one point of data. You can have an analysis of multiple observations where you can actually do some statistics if you have observations of the same type. 
then you can do an analysis of a multi-point experiment, say your experiment run repeatedly by an individual or group of people doing the same experiment over and over. Then you can have a meta-analysis of all the observations, which gets you into more certainty than the observations. And keep in mind here, I'm putting observations below experiments, because experiments we get much more detailed information. And then you can have at the very top an analysis of multiple experiments and then a meta-analysis of all experiments. And we see meta-analysis of experiments when people are trying to come up with the accepted value of a constant, where they look at the most important experiments and then try to average out the number uh, and then eliminate experiments that aren't consistent for some reason. And so those, those are all important. But the other thing that's missed is that you have to put logic on top. You have to not, you have to dismiss theories that are unobservable and you have to dismiss theories that are logical impossibilities. And if you do that, hopefully you get to the truth. And some people add dismissing untestable theories. But the thing is, with physics, not everything is testable. Just like in mathematics, mathematics is incomplete, and so physics is incomplete. And so at some point, physics goes from something that's testable to not testable, or even observable to unobservable. And we go from a rigorous, experimentally confirmed science to metaphysics, philosophy, or even religion. And so you have to accept that some of the deeper parts of a problem are going to transition into metaphysics, into philosophy. And in that case, you have logical tests are the only way to confirm that they're consistent with the observations and experiments and consistent with the logic in the theory. So that's important too, if we're to get to the truth. So this is sort of a first cut proposal of what a evidence tree for physics might look like. But the important thing to remember is expert opinion is at the bottom and the expert may not be trusted at all, as Feynman said, because if science is to progress, you can't trust the consensus. So I hope you liked this video. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe, because that helps me grow my channel and more people get to find out about what I know about physics or what I learn about physics. And if you're interested in knowing more about my quantum field theory and particle theory, I have some books for sale. And thanks again, as always, to my Patreon, PayPal, and Super Thanks supporters. And thanks for watching.